49ers Cal High Sports is presented by U.S. Bank. Life keeps moving. We're here for every step. U.S. Bank member, FDIC. Next on 49ers Cal High Sports presented by U.S. Bank. All spring sports all the time. With great games all around the Bay Area, we have San Ramon Valley at Foothill. Westmont battles Lee and James Logan takes on Moreau Catholic. We will see two of the Bay Area's best in softball with St. Francis meeting NorCal champion Hollister. Lacrosse with Powers Oak Ridge and San Ramon Valley and the story of the Peninsula soccer star on the field after open heart surgery. That's next on 49ers Cal High Sports, presented by U.S. Bank. Welcome to 49ers Cal High Sports presented by U.S. Bank. I'm Robert Bronstein. And I'm Aubrey Tolliver. We start tonight with a huge softball game. It's the rematch of the NorCal final game played last May. The Hollister Haybalers won that game by just one run in nine innings. The early season rematch leads our show tonight. The game played in Hollister Saturday afternoon. Adrian Surion here in Hollister as the Hay Baylors take on St. Francis. The Lancers on the board first. Becca Quinn blasts one deep to center. That will go all the way to the fence as Jamie Oakland comes in to score one nothing. Then Kate Munderland hits it down the third baseline for a double as Peyton Sow and Becca Quinn both score and it's 3-0 St. Francis. The Lancers looking for more but a great play here by Dominique Oliveira as she gets the ball and tags the runner to end the St. Francis threat. Kate Munderland was dominant in the circle all day long. Kate getting the strikeout here, still 3-0. St. Francis Lancers after one. St. Francis trying to add on in the second, but great defense once again as Grace Peffley dives to make a spectacular catch. Top three now and Shannon Keegren grounds it down the third baseline. That's a fair ball as Becca Quinn is in. Racing around third and scoring is Valerie Wong. 5-0 St. Francis Lancers after three. Hollister with the runner on third in the fourth, but Texas A&M bound senior Kate Munderland gets one of her five Ks on the day. Still 5-0 Lancers after four. Runners at first and third now for St. Francis in the sixth, and Peyton Sow shoots it to left for a base hit. Isabella Sandoval comes in to score. 6-0 St. Francis. Hollister gets one back in the bottom half. Mia Phillips grounds one to short. The Lancers get the out at first, but Oliveira scores. 6-1 St. Francis after six. Top seven now, and Keegren hits it high and deep to center. There it goes. Goes! See ya! A long home run for the future Boise State Bronco. 7-1 St. Francis Lancers. Two down in the bottom half of the seventh. And Maya Yumiba makes the catch as St. Francis wins it. 7-1 behind big games from Kate Munderland and Shannon Keegren. The Lowell Cardinals getting set to battle Washington at Golden Gate Park. Lowell strikes first in the first as Liam Mahoney hits a bouncer out the left. Roman Fong scores. Here comes Brandon Liu sliding head first. Cardinals tack on another run to make it 3 0 after one. Roman's sister Isabella Fong was on the mound for the Eagles, and here she gets the batter looking with this strikeout. Later in the second, it's Fong versus Fong, and Roman wins the battle, sending this ball high and deep out the right center field. This ball drops a sliding triple. Triple for Mr. Fong, then Brandon Liu hits one the third. The third baseman cannot make the play. Roman scores and it's 4-0 Lowell after two innings. Eagles looking to get going in the third. Tyler Hampton goes the other way out to right and it's fair. A double for Hampton, but the Eagles don't score. Hiroki Aoshima was phenomenal on the rubber for the Cardinals. The senior only allowed two hits with nine strikeouts and Lowell would score a run in both the fifth and sixth inning. Roman Fong had himself a game. Three for four including this double, Roman would score off the sack fly as Lowell rolls past Washington, winning six to nothing. Alshima getting the complete game shutout for the Cardinals. Off to Arinda now as Miramonte takes on Berean Christian. The Mets on the board first in the first. Joe Shallot grounds it through the infield for a base hit. Gavin Kelleher scores 1-0 Miramonte after one. Top three now and Luke Upshaw hits it to left field for a single. Justin Mugi comes home and it's tied up at one. Upshaw was also great on the mound for the Eagles. Luke getting one of his seven Ks on the day here. Burian jumps ahead in the fourth. Damon New goes the other way to right field. That's a fair ball as Ryder Walker and Colton Swift come in to score, and it's 3-1 Eagles. 
Then Bennett Wilson lines one to left field for a base hit. Ivor Vertulfo is in. Right behind him is Damon New. 5-1 Berean Christian after four. Miramonte looking to rally back in the fifth, but Berean goes Ryder Walker to Colton Swift to Bennett Wilson. That's a double play. One more for the Eagles in the seventh. Swift smacks it to left for a single. Ryland Riccobona and Josh Werner score as Berean Christian improves to 8-0 in the season. 2-0 in the Diablo Valley League. It's a battle of the unbeatens here in Danville as San Ramon Valley battles Oak Ridge. The Wolves strike first in the first. How about Eddie Brower going with the skip shot? And the Colorado commit finds the back of the net. Back on the Trojans, here's Ella Rutherford on the free position shot, and Ella scores one of her four goals in the contest. But the Wolves tack on two more goals to end the first. Here's the speedy Jess Sprague drawing the pump fake, and Jess shoots, and the ball trickles off the goalie, and in the net, 3-1 Wolves after one. SRV tacks on another goal in the second as Leslie Iorio scores from the eight-meter mark. It's 4-1 SRV at the half. SRV looking to pull away in the second half. How about Liz Kerr showing off the range with this remarkable goal? Oh my, but the Trojans continue the fight. Remarkable move here by Anika Tanner. A little spin move and check out the finish. 7-4 Wolves after three quarters and San Ramon Valley hangs tough until the very end. You saw Liz Kerr find the back of the net. How about Grace Kerr getting into the action for one of her two goals as San Ramon Valley remains unbeaten, beating Oak Ridge nine to six. The Rikus Center brings us the Gary Rikus Players of the Week every week, the award based on performances in last week's games. The announcement performed in a wrap by our good friends at the Rikus Center. Here are this week's Gary Rikus Players of the Week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. It's like facing face the perfect version of amazing. amazing. When they see us purpose, it's worth it. Surely more sure than the jury to place it. Verdict on Casey, verdict the main thing. That gave wings to the Falcons. Three home runs and a dub was the outcome. Crazy. Watching everybody stun. Casey moves to the U with Washington. Well, now many chances they plan until the game may land a bit damage playing Hannah Ames. Every standard raised with the charger. Election fine. Collective fine. Five army guys in the larger. Tip a size up two homers. Those were enough proof showing who's stronger. You choose two to walk or twice after that. And on purpose, if you even have to ask. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we like this. Players of the week. Trigger deep beats and mace. Yeah. D-Line Constructors is a Bay Area leader in demolition, grading, paving, and site utilities. D-Line Constructors digs in with a passion and brings us the D-Line Defensive Play of the Week. This week's D-Line Constructors Defensive Play goes to Chris Von Barlowin from Branham. Chris with a terrific diving snow cone catch. Look at that. Chris Von Barlowin is this week's D-Line Constructors Defensive Play. The San Francisco Giants present the Baseball Coach of the Week every week. Our Giants coach of the week this week is Corgan Willis from Granada. The Matadors with a huge win last week to go to 7-0 on the season, 2-0 in the East Bay League. Corgan Willis, this week's San Francisco Giants coach of the week. Coming up, the Chick-fil-A sportsmanship game as James Logan battles Moreau Catholic. And the girls from Valley Christian taking on the Kings Academy in softball when 49ers Cal High Sports presented by U.S. Bank continues. There's something about the start of a new season. With Duval, Wade, Estrada, and Flo, we're focused on winning every single day. Hi, Logan. Hi, Giants. I can't wait to get back on the field with these guys. Yeah, there's nothing like it. How's the chicken? Oh, the prawns are delicious. Oh, I have a shellfish allergy. One prawn, very good. Did I say chicken wrong? Tired of people not listening to what you want? It's truffle season. Ah, that's okay. Never I... enough truffles. How much are they? It's a lot. Oh, okay. I'm good. Uh, that. It's like a priceless piece of art. Enjoy. Or when they sell you what they want. Yeah. yeah. The more we understand you, the better we can help you. That's what U.S. Bank is for. Huge relief. Yeah. Trevor was born a champion. He knows how to make lemonade from lemons. He also knows that comfort is all year round. So sometimes when you can't make lemonade, you make hot chocolate. Today, Trevor is proud to be a service champion. He continues to care for clients year round. We're now offering a $58 two for one special. Get a comprehensive furnace tune up and a free AC safety inspection. Call 800-5-CHAMPS.
Experience ultimate flexibility with Giants Flex membership starting at just $499. Select your games, pick your seats, and experience baseball on your terms. Discounts, priority access, and more await. Become a Flex member today. There's nothing like it. 49ers Cal High Sports is brought to you by these fine companies who care about high school sports. By Service Champions. High Five Service, Champion Attitude, Service Champions. By Chick-fil-A, Eat More Chicken. By Mary West Credit Union, Working for You Today, Tomorrow, Together. And by Stevens Creek Chevrolet, Find New Roads. To the Mission Valley League now, where both James Logan and Moreau Catholic are coming off stellar preseason schedules. The Logan Colts 7-1 and one entering league play. Moreau Catholic with a 4-1 and one preseason record. Opening day in the Mission Valley League is this week's Chick-fil-A sportsmanship game. Our Adrian Soriano was there. The Moreau Catholic Mariners are hitting the ball like crazy so far this season. Senior Jeffrey Chen is leading the way with a 353 batting average, but the Mariners will have to deal with junior pitcher Ben Tower. Ben threw a one-hit shutout against the Pittsburgh Pirates earlier this season. It's the Mission Valley League opener between Moreau Catholic and James Logan in our Chick-fil-A sportsmanship game. Logan on the attack early, Evan Yao smashes it all the way to the center field fence. A good effort from the Moreau center fielder, but the ball does fall in for a one-out triple. Then Travian Martinez grounds one to short. Moreau gets the out of first, but Yao comes in to score. one nothing. James Logan after one. The Colts on the board again in the second. Ben Tower ropes it to left for a base hit. Wesley Vegas scores and it's 2-0 James Logan. The Mariners looking to get the run back in the bottom half, but Martinez fires a strike to Yash Gupta to nab the runner at second. Still 2-0 Colts after two. Top three now and Martinez crushes it off the green ivy in center field for a triple. Evan Yao comes in to score again and it's 3-0 James Logan Colts. Moreau loads the bases in the bottom half, but the Colts go Ben Tower to Travian Martinez to Julian Vasquez. That's a double play, still 3-0 Colts after three. Logan trying to add on in the fourth. Jesus Vasquez lines one to right for a base hit, but great defense from Moreau here as Isaiah Clendenin throws a laser to Gary Elizieri and the runner is out at the plate. Ben Tower was dealing all day long for the Colts. Ben getting the strikeout here, still 3-0. James Logan after four. One more for the Colts in the fifth. Vega hits a high pop fly to shallow left field. That falls in for a base hit as Martinez crosses the plate, 4-0 Colts. Moreau still looking to get on the board, but the Colts go Evan Yao to Yash Gupta to Julian Vasquez. Another double play to keep the Colts lead at four after five. Sixth inning now and Tower gets one of his seven strikeouts on the day as James Logan wins the Mission Valley League opener over Moreau to go to 6-0 on the season. Here's Ben Tower talking about the team chemistry this season. We've, we've all played travel ball together. A lot of them grew up together. I'm, I've came around in the past couple years, but I think we all just like being around each other, like being teammates. In Hayward with the Chick-fil-A Sportsmanship game, I'm Adrian Soriano, 49ers Cal High Sports. A sunny day on the hilltop as the Kings Academy takes on Valley Christian. Nick introduced on the call. Top first runner on first. Mia Bennett puts bat to ball, finding the gap in left center for a double. Sophie Giles gets the stop sign at third, but the Warrior defense keeps it scoreless. Bottom of the inning, runner on third. Mackenzie Leon hits a high and deep fly ball to center field. Ava Thompson makes the catch, fires home. The throw is online and perfect to beat the runner, but the catcher can't hold on. Hannah Pequiz comes in to score. It's 3-0 Warriors after one. Bottom of the third, McKenna ceiling with a rocket to third. Talia Haskin comes home. Bella Giles chases her and throws home, but Talia dodges a tag and touches home. 4 0 Valley Christian. Lana Escarcega sends one past the third baseman, and this one reaches the wall. Lana is in with a stand up double and two RBI. Valley Christian jumps ahead 6 0. Later in the inning, Soldad Healy shoots one past the shortstop. Escarcega comes in to score. Healy picks up an RBI double. It's 7 0 Warriors. Haskins at the plate now with a blooper to shallow right field that drops. Pequiz gets the wave home and the throw is behind her. It's a seven-run Valley Christian inning, but we are not done there. Later in the inning, Leon up to bat, finding the gap in left center field. This one goes all the way to the wall. Two runners come in to score on the Leon double. Valley Christian beats the Kings Academy 12-1 after five innings, outscoring their opponents 22-1 in the last two games, improving to 6-4 and four on the season. Service Champions Heating and Air Conditioning helps us honor students who perform well on the field while doing great work around campus. This week's Service Champions Champion student spotlight is Ella Copper from the Northgate track and field team. Ella is a member of ASB, the debate club, and she recently started her own club called the Silly Club. It's a club focused on learning certain life skills like filling out a W-4, 
checks, and much more. Ella Copper is this week's Service Champions Student Spotlight. Delta Dental presents Smiles for Scholars every week. Each week we honor a team where every athlete is doing well in the classroom. This week we honor the Harker boys volleyball team with over a 4.0 GPA. We'll meet the boys later in the show. Coming up, West Catholic League baseball action as Mitty meets Bellarmine. But first, here is our U.S. Bank Top 10 softball poll. Ever wonder where the capital A in Chick-fil-A came from? It started with grade A top quality chicken. But we believed everything, not just the food, should be grade A. A is for above and beyond. An extra level of care. A game. From caring for our guests in our community to cleanliness and safe service with a my pleasure. A is for all the little things we do to bring you our best every day. A little funky dance. And that too. From the beginning, MeriWest Credit Union was created to provide a brighter financial future for you. We work hard for our members because they're our greatest strength. MeriWest worked for me when I needed an auto loan for my first car. When I need to make a mobile payment, MeriWest works for me. MeriWest works for me wherever adventure takes us. MeriWest Credit Union, let us work for you today, tomorrow, together. Touchdown 49ers! In my pursuit to greatness, I discovered the secret. Dedication to my team and my relentless drive to win. I chose to be in the presence of greatness. Bernardi Zarata, the official injury attorneys of the San Francisco 49ers, share the same dedication, the same drive, the same spirit of champion. When justice is your goal, choose the dedicated team of Bernardi Zarata, your faithful injury attorneys. At Service Champions, we're now offering a $58 two-for-one special. Get a comprehensive furnace tune-up and a free AC safety inspection. High five service, champion attitude. Call 805-CHAMPS. We are South City. And you're watching 49er Cal High Sports. Presented by U.S. Bank. Yeah, yeah! We are back at the NBC Sports Studio with action from the West Catholic League. The league is in its second week. Bellarmine is getting great pitching early on. The staff has a .85 team ERA. Vitty is hitting the ball really well with Waylon Walsh batting 560 this season. The Bells beat Mitty in game one on Tuesday. The Monarchs will look to even up the series Friday night. Big game for the Bellarmine Bells, who are coming off a Division II section championship. They're taking on Mitty. Matthew Vallejos looking to get a two-out rally started in the bottom of the second. That's a hard hit liner to left, but Monarch starter Luca Pintar strikes out the next batter to end the inning. And here is the San Diego State commit up to bat in the top of the fourth with two outs. A nice little opposite field base knock to extend the inning. Next batter is Makoa Sniffin. Sniffin out an RBI. He hits a deep towering ball to right field and it one hops the fence. Makoa strolls into second with a stand-up double and Pintar scores the game's first run. That's the only run Bellarmine starter Liam Kropp would allow in his four and a third innings of work as he gets the backwards K to end the top of the fourth. Bottom four now, one out, Rockwood rocks the ball to left field for the single. Later in the inning, Nolan Randall is up with two on and he takes the low inside pitch and whips it to left field. Rockwood scores from second, Nate Turkington into third and Randall's RBI double ties this game up. The Bells looking for more, a hard hit to sniffing at third and Makoa gobbles it up and fires to first for the out. Top of the seventh, still tied at one. Mitty has the go-ahead run at third base when Wade Mounts gets the monstrous strikeout to give the Bellarmine Bats a chance to win it. Nolan Randall up with one out, and that is his third hit of the game. Randall represents the game-winning run. Evan Tavares keeps the line moving. That's a hard hit, single to left, and it puts the winning run in scoring position for Sawyer Stout. Stout, a hard line drive to straightaway center, and it soars over the center fielder's head. Randall rounds third and heads home. Sawyer Stout walks it off, and the Bellarmine Bells complete the sweep. His teammates were very excited to say the least. He took a beating there, but Stout still in one piece when we talked to him after the game. Sweet. <laughs> Come on, sir. Yeah. We're coming off a tough, uh, tough series split with SI. It just it means a lot to be able to uh, sweep Mitty. And uh, yeah, we're only, we're only going up from here. Yep. Yeah! 
East Bay League softball between Carondelet and San Ramon Valley. Bottom of the first runners on the corners. Brianna Shapiro lays down a bunt. The pitcher comes home, but the runner is safe. It's 1-0 Wolves early. Top of the second, Kira Angurasov sends one through right field. In comes Samantha Para to score, and it looks like the Cougars might go for another, but the throw from Ava Lyons is in time. Gianna Basset lays down the tag to keep it tied. Bottom half of the inning, runner takes off. Kylie Abrogena fires to second. Sydney Demartini tags the runner out, and that'll end the inning. Reese Albano leads off the top of the third and hits this one high and deep, and see you later. The freshman goes deep for the Cougars. It's 2-1 Carondelet. Cougars add an insurance run later in the inning. Abrogena with a grounder to third. Kylie is too quick. No play at first. Para scores 3-1 Cougars. Same score, bottom of the fifth. Sophia Jin with a drive to deep right center. And it's off the bottom of the fence and kicks away. Jin races around the bases. She's in for the stand-up triple. Next batter is Addie Leois with a hard hit ball that the fielder can't hold on to. Jin comes in to score and it's a one run game. Bottom of the seventh, runners on first and second, one out. Charlie Callison lays down a bunt, the throw to first is offline. Leois gets the wave home from second. That throw is offline, it's a tie game, but here comes Shapiro all the way from first. The throw is not in time and the Wolves walk it off down to their last two outs. The Wolves win it and move to first place at 3-0 in the East Bay League. Tyler Flipson here for West Alameda County League battle. The first place Bishop O'Dowd Dragons visiting the Castle Valley Trojans. Dragons come out dominant. Will Mullen sets to Cameron Costi and Costi smashes it with authority for the early lead. It's that point in the first. Mullen back sets Toby Lee and the junior decimates that one. The Dragons take the first set. Early second set tied up. BOD looking for a kill but 6-6. Lucas wins. Stuffs it at the net. Taking the lead 2-1. But BOD takes the lead right back. The dynamic duo, Mullen sets the cross for the kill. The seniors fired up. Dragons lead 9-5. Set point in the second. Mullen on the money with a set perfectly to Lee and Lee for the kill. Odell takes the second set 25-13. Now watch this one closely. Trojans looking for the kill, but Crossy with the quick thinking dig off his heel. Tyrone Alviar getting it back over. Trojans scramble but manage to save it, but not before the leaping Lee is there for the monstrous kill. What a rally for the Dragons. BOD lead 17-8 in the third. Match point in the third. And who other than the kill-tastic Crosby for the final point, and that will do it. Bishop O'Dowd stays perfect in the league, improving to 6-0, taking down Casha Valley, 3 sets to 9. Chick-fil-A brings us stories of athletes who inspire us. Jake Vanderbrook joins us now with the amazing comeback for one Peninsula soccer star. Robert Aubrey Caitlin Lowry was just 10 years old when she went through a life-changing moment. Now, she's playing the game she loves most, and is following her heart. It's just like any other night practice for Caitlin Lowry. This hardworking soccer player plays for the Bay Area Surf ECNL team. Caitlin discovered a passion for the game when she was six years old. I would say the people around me, like my teammates and the coaches, are definitely the best part of soccer. So every time I come, it's like a family. Caitlin may seem like any other soccer player, giving it her all on the pitch. However, Caitlin was born with a congenital heart condition. And she was born with two different things, a hole in the heart between two heart chambers, and then some of the veins coming from her lung into her heart were connected to the wrong heart chamber. When Caitlin was just nine years old, a local pediatrician discovered Caitlin had a heart murmur. It got to a point where Caitlin had trouble breathing. She was doing this little dance, it was like sitting in a circle, it's like a little Girl Scout song, and she's skipping around and she's singing the song. She started getting short of breath, and that's when I kind of realized, oh, this is something. Caitlin was sent to Stanford Children's Hospital for open heart surgery, a life-changing moment for Caitlin and her family. How is this possible? Someone as healthy as Caitlin, she's not limited by anything. Um, she plays soccer, so it was really um, kind of shocking that she had to have open heart surgery. If she hadn't had those fixed, her quality of life would have been dramatically limited because the heart isn't working as efficiently as it should. Good job, Katie. After a three-hour operation, the surgery was a success. And we were able to repair both of those conditions, the hole in the heart and redirecting 
the abnormally draining veins to, into the correct heart chamber. And basically, once that procedure was finished, uh, her heart basically became normal. After multiple months of recovery, Caitlin was cleared to return to the game she loves. After I first came back, I was kind of scared to like have contact with anyone or touch anyone. So my dad and brother took me out to the field and they started like throwing me around, elbowing me to like show me that I wasn't just going to break. So then after that moment, I was like, oh, it's, it really is fine because my stamina went up way more because it was easier to breathe and everything. And then I was like, you know, your chest is stronger than it was before. You know, you've got like reinforced steel in there now, girl. You're good to go. Caitlin is now aiming to play Division I soccer. This determined athlete will look to make the most of her opportunities following her heart. Anyone out there who's having heart surgery or anything, like, you can get past it. It's, it, it's not going to change who you are or anything. At the end of the day, Caitlin's story reminds us to keep pushing when being challenged. So obviously the goal for Caitlin is to play collegiate soccer at the D1 level. See what I did there with the, the goal and the <laughs> kick, yeah. But Caitlin has an interest in pre-med. She either wants to be involved with sports medicine or she wants to become a doctor. Just like those doctors that helped her. Yeah. I love that. Thank you, Jake. Mary West Credit Union brings us the Mary West Merit Award honoring Bay Area teachers. Here's Zachary Blue talking about his favorite teacher, Walter Hahn. My favorite teacher is Mr. Hahn. Walter Hahn, he's my stats teacher, um, and he really makes the class interesting. He always uses food whenever we're um, looking at different problem sets, and I really like how he teaches and how he involves the whole class. Coming up, East Bay League play with Foothill and San Ramon Valley. And big time boys lacrosse with St. Ignatius and De La Salle. 49ers Cal High Sports presented by U.S. Bank. We'll be right back. <laughs> 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 At Service Champions, we're now offering a $58 two-for-one special. Get a comprehensive furnace tune-up and a free AC safety inspection. High five service, champion attitude. Call 805-CHAMPS. One, two, three. Get ready to cheer for your next new or used car at Stevens Creek Chevrolet. Stevens Creek Chevrolet! We're ready to make your buying experience safe and easy. Come to our dealership to see and test drive one of hundreds of great Chevrolet cars and trucks. Or you can go online to shop, order and have your new car delivered right to your door. So get fired up for a great deal right here at... I'm Nancy Lambert, the director of the Schwab Learning Center at CHC. In a world where every second counts, education doesn't have to be a struggle. At the Schwab Learning Center, our learning specialists work one-on-one -on -one with high school and college students with ADHD, dyslexia, and other learning differences. We work with you to understand your learning and attention strengths and challenges. We help you develop strategies that optimize the way you learn. Discover the power of personalized learning that empowers students to excel. Your success is our mission. Are you time? Forty ers Cal High Sports is brought to you by these fine companies who care about high school sports. By Lexus of Stevens Creek, taking care of our guests one at a time. By DGDG.com where we want you to be a happy car buyer. By Schwab Learning Center, your success is our mission. By the Rikers Center, got goals? And by Sharks Ice, official practice facility of the San Jose Sharks and home of the San Jose Barracuda. The Foothill Falcons are off to a fast start in East Bay League play with a 2-0 record to start this week. Junior Landon Comerford leading the Falcons with a very impressive 6.09 batting average and 14 RBI in eight games. The Falcons hosting San Ramon Valley this week. The Wolves feature football star Marco Jones, who's hitting 450 so far this season. East Bay League action at Foothill Wednesday. Getting ready for San Ramon Valley at Foothill East Bay League action. Top one, a runner on for Colin Lintero, who smashes it high and very deep to left, and it is gone. A two-run blast for Lintero and a 2-0 Wolves lead plant the flag. 
Chuck Raylan starts and pitches a strong four and two thirds with four Ks, including this one to end the first for the Wolves. San Ramon Valley adding on in the third runner at third as the pitch gets away. Here comes Max Ellis, part of a three run third for SRV. Here's Julius Cambro with a clutch single to left scoring is Marco Jones and the Wolves have a five nothing lead. Later in the third, Joseph Kalplin sends it deep to right, but a fine running catch out there by George Schmidt to end the top of the third. Bottom three now, and here comes Foothill. We talked about Landon Comerford having a great season. This blast to right center is a double for Landon, scoring as Elijah Lamley and Austin Harris. It's 5-2. to two. Later same inning, Nate Nowitzki hits a frozen rope to center. Comerford scores. The SRV lead is now 5-3. to three. But the Wolves extend from there with two in the fourth, and now in the sixth, Max Ellis takes it deep to left, and it's gone. A solo shot for Ellis and an 8-3 Wolves lead plant the flag. One more for the Wolves in the sixth. Luke Baker with his second hit of the game. A rocket to the fence in right center. Jones scores and it's 9-3 Wolves. Great Wolves D here. A line shot to Lintero who makes a terrific leaping catch and San Ramon Valley goes to 2-1 and one in league. Part of a four-way second place tie with the 9-3 victory. Two of the top boys lacrosse teams in the Bay Area squaring off Tuesday night. De La Salle hosting St. Ignatius. The Wildcats up early. Henry Magger passes to Max Ripple, who rips it past the keeper. That's his second goal in the first two and a half minutes. Two nothing Cats. Cats going around the perimeter. Ripple to Stu Gates, and it is four nothing Cats after one. Second quarter, good catch by Stu Gates to keep it in play. He passes over the net to twin brother Hugh, and that Stu-Hugh combo makes it a 6-1 game. De La Salle pressuring, Houdon Lee, the diving pass to Jude Beacon. Great play there for the Spartans' second goal of the game. Still in the second quarter, Chapman to Will Honey, who goes top shelf, put it on the board. Lee escaping two defenders and fires on goal, but George Vlahos wins the 1v1 battle for the save. After a slow start, the Spartans are getting hot. Henry Benner jabs right, switches arms, and lands the left-handed shot. Benner would lead the Spartans in scoring with three goals, a big second half for Dela, but St. Ignatius was dominant from opening faceoff. Hugh grabs his game-high fifth goal, and St. Ignatius remains undefeated on the year, improving to 5-0. Lexus of Stevens Creek brings us the volunteer award leading to $10,000 in scholarships to be handed out by Lexus of Stevens Creek at our end of the season awards banquet. We are now preparing for our voting stage where you can go to our website to vote for your favorite volunteer. Voting will begin April 1st. Gallo Salami helps us spotlight top athletes who are among the top recruits in the nation. This week we catch up with Jamar Searcy, who is a junior running back at Pittsburgh High School. Jamar getting lots of attention, including offers from Washington State and San Jose State. Coming up, Deanza Division action with Los Gatos and Palo Alto. And softball in the Mount Hamilton with Leland and Santa Teresa. But first, here is this week's learning tip from the Schwab Learning Center. Using assistive technology can really help students with ADHD or dyslexia. Using text-to-speech or voice recognition programs can help students with dyslexia or ADHD build effective and efficient learning and study skills. Use text-to-speech software like Bookshare and Speechify or audiobooks to have written text read aloud to you. This can improve comprehension and save time. There are also excellent tools that convert speech to text for writing. Work with a Schwab Learning Center learning specialist like me to learn more about assistive technology tools to optimize performance. Opening week for most of the De Anza Division this week, the Los Gatos Wildcats were 7-1 to start the week featuring Fullerton State bound senior Carter Johnstone. The Wildcats meeting Palo Alto, the Vikings Dexter Cleveringa hitting 381 to lead Pally this season. The team's playing two this week. Game one played at Pally on Wednesday. Palo Alto taking the field against the defending De Anza Division champ Los Gatos. The Wildcats get their leadoff hitter on in the top of the first. Pally catcher Carter Bader nabs the runner. It's scoreless after the first frame. Pally is quick to get on the board. Dexter Cleveringa with a runner on third. Shoots one to left field. In comes Charlie Bates. 1-0 Pally after one. Donovan Freed slaps one through the left side in the top of the second, but Freed would be left stranded, and then Pally tacks on a couple more in the bottom of the third. Zach Tom, it's a high, deep ball to left center, and that's deep enough. Henry Harding and Bates score on the double by Tom. Ethan Williams gets the strikeout to end the inning. 3-0 Pally. 
Viking starter Vincent Braga with a strong showing. This is his fourth strikeout through four innings. Los Gatos still looking to push across its first run. Lucas Carlisle with a deep ball to straightaway center, taking on the deepest part of the yard. Two outs, a soft liner up the middle. Charlie Bates comes up with a great run-saving catch in shallow center. Pitcher Vincent Braga gives hats off to his shortstop. Still 3-0 Pally. Bates up to bat in the bottom of the fifth. A deep fly ball to the opposite field, and that ball is gone. Bates, the Stanford commit, hits a solo shot, and Palo Alto would go on to take the 5-0 lead. Top of the seventh, Harding comes in to get the final three outs, and he does just that in order. Braga records the win after throwing six shutout innings, 5-0 the final on Wednesday, and with a Los Gatos win on Friday, the series ends in a split. Tyler Flipson here from Mount Hamilton League Battle, the Leland Chargers visiting the Santa Teresa Saints. Chargers, Courtney Sheffaloo was throwing gas all game from the circle with one of her four strikeouts of the day in the second. Chargers looking to get the bats going in the third, but Saints, Claire Zarzexny is there rifling that out at first. Bottom of the third now, Saints with runners on second and third, but Sheffaloo gets the Chargers out of a pinch to close out the third, keeping it scoreless. Leland looks to get it going with an absolute laser here, but there's no getting by Zarzexny snagging that one. This is nothing shy of a defensive brawl. Top of the fifth, it's bunted to Mariah Avalos getting the out at first, then Haley Saoli fires to Samantha Vidal at second for the L. What a double play for the Saints. ST looking to take that momentum onto offense. Laser to third, but charges Ella Ferguson there with a stellar snag. Bob in the sixth now. Santa Teresa gets a shot deep in the center, nearly to the fence, but an outstanding catch by Riley De Niro. She fires back to first where the runner is safe. We stay scoreless going into the seventh. Top seven now. Hannah Ames at the plate and absolutely nukes it. That thing is G-O-N-E gone. Ames with the solo shot in the seventh to take the lead. One nothing Chargers. Final chance for ST. Two outs. Runners on second and third. It's grounded to Chargers. Ella Shaver. She fires the first. It's closed, but she's called out. Leland hangs on and wins it an absolute nail biter thanks to Hannah Ames' solo shot in the seventh. Here she is after the game, sharing her thoughts going into that at bat. Well, I don't know. I just I just wanted to get a hit. I was, but I just wanted to go up there thinking I can hit, and that's what I did. The Harker School helps us honor scholar athletes each week. This week's Harker Scholar Athlete is Nolan Menina from the Branham baseball team. Nolan, great on the field and in the classroom with a 3.9 GPA. Brought to you by the Harker School, March 15th was World Sleep Day. Middle school students wore pajamas to school to promote the importance of developing healthy sleeping habits. At Harker, transitional kindergarten through 12th grade students discover their passions. Learn more at www.harker.org. Albany's Construction brings us the dirty work play each week. This is the play showing the same type of grit and determination exemplified by all of the folks at Albany's Construction. This week's dirty work play goes to Brady Wright from Los Lomas. Brady with a sliding stop and an accurate throw to get a tough out in the night's game last week. Brady Wright doing the dirty work just like our good friends at Albany's Construction. There's so much great content on our social media. Check us out all week long on all of the platforms, but especially on Instagram, where Gabby Rothstein and Damian Nola started following us this week. We are at 49ers Cal High, and please subscribe to our YouTube page to see when new content is available. And remember, you can buy full game videos from any of the games we shoot throughout the week. Go to 49erscalhighsports.com to order. Coming up, Lee and Westmont in our Crumble Cookies Game of the Week. And St. Mary's hosts Miramonte as 49ers Cal High Sports presented by U.S. Bank rolls along. This tiny payment thing is a giant pain. Hi, ladies. Alex from U.S. Bank. Can she help? How about a comprehensive point of sale system that can track inventory, manage schedules, and customize orders? That's what U.S. Bank Business Essentials is for. What about a new oven? Can U.S. Bank help us there? We can serve loans in as fast as 12 minutes. That would be a big help. Huge. Jumbo. Ginormous. Woo! Woo! Finding ways to make your business boom. That's what U.S. Bank is for. We'll get there together. Join us on the ice for the Bay Area's hottest sport. High school ice hockey leagues are forming now for the upcoming season. Be part of this fast-moving, hard-hitting, crazy, exciting game. You can join as part of your high school team or sign up to be assigned to a team. Games are played at Sharks Ice locations all around the Bay Area. Jump in anytime and join your friends on the ice. Be a part of Bay Area High School Hockey. Contact Sharks Ice for more details and get into the game today. 
want to make $186,000 a year, serving a community that wants you. The San Jose Police Department is hiring. Choose from over 50 specialty assignments like K-9 officer, helicopter pilot, or crime scene investigator. If you have the drive to serve, we will teach you the rest. Apply today at joinsjpd.com. Jerry Rice, touchdown 49ers. In my pursuit to greatness, I discovered the secret. Dedication to my team and my relentless drive to win. I chose to be in the presence of greatness. Benardi Zarata, the official injury attorneys of the San Francisco 49ers, share the same dedication, the same drive, the same spirit of champion. When justice is your goal, choose the dedicated team of Benardi Zarata, your faithful injury attorneys. The Lee Longhorns have an early lead in the Mount Hamilton division with a 2-0 record with Brandon Kim leading a hard-hitting Longhorn crew. Lee taking on Westmont this week. The Warriors looking to hand Lee its first league loss in our Crumble Cookies Game of the Week. Jake Vanderbrook was there. You know, my shirt may be as bright like the sun, but that's okay. It's a beautiful day for some baseball. We got a good one for you in San Jose as Lee takes on Westmont. The Longhorns will look to take game two of this two game series. Marcus Glanville will get the start for the Longhorns, so be on the lookout for him. And for Westmont, watch out for Aiden Cabada. He's also going to be the starting pitcher. He's hitting 400 on the season, and he leads the team with 12 hits. It's Lee and Westmont in our Crumble Cookies. Game of the week. The pitching was phenomenal all throughout. Here's Glanville getting the punch out for one of his four K's in the ball game. Here's Kabata in the bottom half getting the punch out. Still no score after two innings. Top of the third, Ryan Wrangle grounds one up the short, and Wrangle is able to reach on an air. Great hustle here by the senior. Couple batters later, runners on the corners for Matthew Reinhardt, who does his job. Puts the ball in play. Brandon Kim makes the catch. Tagging and scoring is Wrangle. 1-0 Westmont. More Warriors in the third. Runners on first and second for Sean Chen, who finds the grass out and left for a knock. There's a lot happening here. The throw back to the infield gets away. Tyler Rizzolia makes his way back to second. The throw goes to second, and now there's a play at the plate, and that throw gets away. Christian Preciado scores, and it's 2-0 Westmont. Lee looks to respond. Noah Miller had a great game going two for three, which includes this base hit the lead off the bottom of the third. Few bears later, Brandon Kim drives this ball out the center for an RBI single. Miller scores, and it's 2-1 Westmont. Jumping to the seventh. More Aiden Cabana. Seven strong innings for the right-hander, which features this strikeout. And he had a lot of trust in his defense. Tying run at second. Here's a shot out the left. But Rangel makes the catch to record the final out. Big road win for Westmont, beating Lee 2-1. to one. A complete game for Aiden Cabana, allowing just one run on four hits with four strikeouts. This is what Aiden had to say after the game. Yeah, I mean, we've been together since freshman year. They really keep me keep me to it. Uh, fastball was working, and I had some decent control. Uh, my teammates, they kept me in it, helped me power through. Reporting from Lee High School with the Crumble Cookies Game of the Week, I'm Jake Vanderbrook, 49ers, Cal High Sports. The traditional pregame cartwheel as St. Mary's hosts Miramonte. The Mats up 1-0. St. Mary's with a couple of runners on, but Mats pitcher Abby Warren gets the K to end the threat. Miramonte's Talia Cardin at third for the Mats, but not for long as Gianna Granzella rips it through the left side to give Miramonte a 2-0 lead. Cardin at the plate in the third, and Talia just crushes this one deep left center, and the outstanding freshman is fast. Warren scores, Talia heading for home. It's a two-run shot and a 4-0 Miramonte lead. Lead. To the fourth we go. Here's Granzella, another freshman, ripping it through the left side. The ball gets away in the outfield, allowing Madeline Rosner to score. Here comes Granzella, 6-1 Mats. 
Later in the fourth, a runner on for Antonio Lawrence, who sends a shot through the right side, past the outfield, and we're running again. Avery Haynes scores, heading for third is Lawrence. It's 8-1 to one Miramonte. St. Mary's has an outstanding junior shortstop, Afi Shen. Afi with a 4-for-4 four four game for the Panthers, including this line shot to right center. Mila Sanchez is home, and when the ball gets away, Shen also scores. But here's Carden again, and Talia sends it way out to left center, and she gets to run again. And we know this freshman is fast. Carden circling the bases. It's a 9-5 Mats lead. Here's Granzella again. This is a seventh inning rocket down the left field line. Scoring is Alexis Sandstrom. Here comes Granzella, and Miramonte has a 12 to 5 victory. Cardin and Granzella with big games for the Mats. The Harker volleyball squad is having a terrific season. The boys meeting up with our Jake Vanderbrook at the Rikus Center this week. And we are here at the Rikus Center for human enhancement where goals are achieved. Got goals? And here's the boys' volleyball team from the Harker School. Make some noise! Yeah! So we're going to start off with Spencer Max. So Spencer, you guys are on a four-game win streak. What's been clicking for you guys thus far? Uh, I think a lot of it has to do with what we've been doing at practice. I think uh, we've been working really well with our like team chemistry and everything. Um, and obviously, we have like a very solidified group. Uh, since most of us are like seniors or juniors and I think that just playing over the years together has helped us build that chemistry and then obviously our amazing coaching staff with coach Mason and coach Kyle. Yeah and one of your victories we covered against Lindbrook Spencer had 18 kills but who was uh, delivering those passes that was Mr. Adrian Liu you know the back set passes were on point you know just talk about the trust that you have with your attackers when when they're going up for those big spikes. Yeah I think uh, kind of trusting your guys trusting the team is a big thing for us kind of like Spencer was saying team chemistry has been really important so as we go along in the season I think that's something that we try and build in practice you know Coach Mason, Coach Kyle helping us kind of figure out what works for which guys and what doesn't. So I think knowing that and going forward, looking forward to a lot more success this year. Finally, I'm going to make my way over to Aaron Guo. So Aaron, what is it going to take for this program to make another run for not just a CCS title, but also a NorCal title? Yeah, so I think one thing that sets us apart from other teams is like our fight during the very long rallies and everything. It's not just our fundamental skills and everything, but like we work really uh, well together like during the crunch time and everything so I think just those long rallies you have to lock in dial in that's gonna that's what, what's gonna get us our uh, success in the end yeah gentlemen thank you so much for joining me take us out with a break Eagles on three, one, two, three. Eagles! Stevens Creek Chevrolet brings us the spirit corner each week honoring spirit teams all around the Bay Area here is the Salesian cheer squad <laughs> Coming up to the peninsula, we go for Cappuccino and Carlmont. But first, here is our U.S. Bank Top 10 Baseball Poll. The Carlmont Scots taking the field as they take on Cappuccino. The Mustangs looking to get on the board first, but great defense here as Noah Wabrinski feels the grounder, spins and throws a dart to Grant Goetz to get the out, no score after one. Carmont jumps ahead in the second. Luke Tofi lays down a beautiful safety squeeze bunt. The throw to first is off as Brian Cook scores. 1-0 Scots. Carmont looking for more, but Luka Zayak fires a strike to Declan Mendel to nab the runner a second. Still 1-0 Scots after two. Cap answers back in the third. Michael Reardon goes the other way for a base hit. Here comes Aiden Mendel, and Aiden is safe at the plate, and this game is all tied up at one. Cappuccino trying to take the lead, but Adam Bailey gets the big-time strikeout to get out of the jam and keep the game tied at one after three. Bottom five now, and Kenny Chu grounds it to short. The ball finds the grass in the outfield as Tyler Webster comes in to score, and the Scots take the lead two to one. Jason Tofi up to bat next, and Jason sends one deep to left field. That will go all the way to the fence as Kenny Chu races into score, and it's 3-1 Carmont Scott. Then it's Henry Massey with the fly ball to center field. Joseph Tresete makes the catch, but here comes Noah Wurbinski, and Noah is safe at the plate. 
4-1 Carlmont Scots after five. Meanwhile, Adam Bailey pitched six stellar innings for Carlmont. Adam only allowing an earned run while striking out three batters. Top seven now and Caden Healy shuts it down as he induces the grounder to third. Riley Becker throws it to Grant Goetz for the final out as Carmont wins it 5-1 to to improve to 7-1 on the season, 3-1 in the Peninsula Bay Division. Bernardi Zarada is your faithful injury attorneys, bringing us the hometown hero every week. This week we honor Oakland High alum Damian Lillard, the NBA superstar visiting Oakland to support his former school in the NorCal playoffs. Dame does lots to help Oakland High and the Oakland community. Damian Lillard, this week's Renarde Zarata, hometown hero. DGDG.com wants you to be a happy car buyer, so each week they bring us the Be Happy Play. This is a play in a game that made everybody happy. This week's Be Happy Play goes to Talia Cardin from Miramani. Talia hitting it way out there, and it's a home run for Talia, and all of her teammates were very happy about it. Want to be a happy car buyer? Go to DGDG.com. Coming up, it's a service by Medallion Play of the Week. It might be this play, but you have to wait to find out. First, here's this week's training tip by our good friends at the Rakit Center. I'm Andrew Havili. Today's training tip is a resist rotation with a bungee. Cole's going to start with his feet shoulder width apart, reach out. We're going to start out with just holding it. You should get a little shoulder, but a lot of core. All right, if you want to progress it forward, you can start slowly assisting it side to side. Just a little more core activation. From there, he can take little lateral steps out, get glute activation at the same time. If you want a little more lateral balance, he'll split the legs, doesn't matter, open or close, and then either hold or assist. We announced the service by Medallion Play of the Week to end every show. We'll show you some top contenders that announced this week's service by Medallion Play of the Week. Play of the Week. Let's start off with Foothills George Smith with this nice over the shoulder catch in the outfield. How about Cappuccino's Luca Zayak with a strike to second to get the runner. Let's go back to the East Bay for James Logan's Travian Martinez with this laser to second to nab the runner. Now how about a double play you don't see often. Ben Tower to Travian Martinez to Julian Vasquez a 1-2-3 double play. Let's stay in Hayward for Moreau Catholics. Isaiah Clendenin with an absolute strike to get the runner at the plate. Off to San Jose now for Valley Christians. Talia Haskins avoiding the tag at the plate to score the run. But the play of the week has to go to Paul Waltos. Charlie Bates with this outstanding play. Mr. Stafford, you just won the play of the week. That's the play of the week, and that is 49ers Cal High Sports for this week. Thanks for watching. I am Aubrey Tolliver. And I'm Robert Brownstein. Be sure to join us next week for the story of the Miramonte softball player who is in her 18th school. We'll see you then. I'm Robert Brownstein. And I'm Aubrey Tolliver. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and check back every Sunday night. And watch us every Sunday night at 6 and 10 p.m. on NBC Sports California. We'll see you at the games.